what's going on guys welcome back to another video this is going to be episode four of building feed and i'm wearing turquoise this week because that is a main theme for this video i finished up the design for the flash speeder i made a bunch of changes that you guys are definitely going to be excited to see as well as i started working on the roads the way that i want to do those and i changed up a little bit of the stuff with the lights i kind of mentioned a little bit of that in the last video when i did the bricklink order so i've changed that up i'm going to show you guys everything with that I'm gonna have a really interesting video for you guys so let's get right into it so one of the main things that i said with the last version of the speeder was that the engines were a little bit too thick and it kind of threw off the entire look of the flash speeder so what i came up with was this this looks really really nice and the only thing that i'm not really super happy with is just how finicky it is because the way it's built is using roller skates and if you guys have ever used roller skates you'll know that the connections are not the best but the way that this works is everything is connected to roller skates and then it kind of spiders through connected all the way with all of these tiles and the curved slopes if I start taking stuff apart you can kind of see it's just a ton of roller skates and to get the tiles on the bottom I ended up putting some inverted ones and then attaching them all into this sideways piece so then you have a strong connection to this way and then also now this way all through this side piece and then I did kind of the same thing with these ones on this side and then as I said I kind of spidered this through because the way that roller skates work is you actually can't put anything in the middle because they stick off a little bit so this entire row here in the middle had to be empty so then I just kind of used a bunch of these corner plates and little tiles just leaving the middle open and then you can go ahead and connect everything like this and then once you get to this point it's a little bit finicky to get everything where you want it because as I said the connection isn't really the best and as you can see this one is kind of popping off a little bit so then you have to really push down force it in there and for me this doesn't really bother me that much because all of my stuff is for display and I don't really care that much how fragile it is and this is honestly this is pretty structurally sound once everything is together just getting it together is the real pain but I wanted to see if there was a way that I could use the inverted pieces on the bottom instead of having to do all these weird stud reversals with the roller skates and what I came up with set that aside is this and this I honestly kind of like a little bit better and the main difference that you'll notice is this has a one by three plate going around here and this has the roller skates and it's actually see-through so I don't really love this I mean it's never really going to be an issue and it kind of has a little bit of detail if you want to call it that but I do kind of like just the straight up black one by three going both ways and I don't really have the right pieces for this and this is all out of sand green because I don't have the teal but I honestly kind of like this better and the reason being is that these are the two by two modified plates and I'll have a picture up on the screen but it makes everything so much stronger and I don't have to worry about anything falling off this is like completely solid in the middle like there's plates going all the way down and the only roller skates are this one and there's one here attaching these sides and so it makes everything so much stronger and you only have to worry about two roller skates as opposed to like eight in the other one and the problem with this is the two by three plate has all of the studs showing and this wouldn't be an issue if there were inverted tiles but in teal they don't exist so that is kind of a bummer but honestly I mean the rest of this is going to have anti studs showing anyway if you flip it upside down so it doesn't really matter that much I think so I'm going to I think pivot in this direction just because of how much easier it is to build and how much more stable it is and it also lets you get rid of this stud here because the way that this works is this is a corner plate and it kind of snakes in here and connects to this two by two curved slope but the way that this works is this is all connected as it is. This is like a one by three that goes in and everything is just super solid. 
So then it lets you just put a 1x2 tile here. And then it just makes the entire thing look like just one solid entity, which I think looks so much better than having this stud. And the stud, I know, isn't really that big of a deal, but it does make this just stand out as its own engine. And I really like this design. I think going to be heading in this direction. And now I can show you guys the rest of the speeder. All right, guys. So this is the new design. And there's a lot of changes. I know I said that I really only wanted to change up the engine and, you know, maybe bring this out a little bit. But I actually went around and redesigned almost the entire design. So the only thing that I really kept was this front section. And even that I made a bunch of changes to. And one thing that I do have to preface this with is that this interior section with using the bracket inverted bracket plates that I did get from Thrawn's Revenge. But everything else, it was just me looking at the available pieces on Bricklink in Dark Turquoise and just seeing what I could make work. And I wanted originally to keep what I had with the jumper plates on the floor, but the rail plates, the one by two plates with the little rail sticking off don't exist in Turquoise. So I couldn't do that. And then I was looking around and I was talking to one of my friends and actually he sent me Thrawn's Revenge and I noticed his design here for this interior section. And I kind of liked it because the way that it works is it gives you enough space to sit two minifigures next to each other without having to use half plate offsets, which is really nice, but it created a ton of problems because this back here, as you can see, is two plates, and then suddenly here this is three plates, and then if you go up all the way to the front, this is two plates again. So that was such a pain trying to figure out how to make those little half plate offsets and still have it be strong. So originally what I had was this just pushed back in one stud, and then I had the problem of the handlebars hitting into this driver, and it just looked weird and I couldn't figure out a way to connect this. So I ended up bringing this out of stud and it gave me enough room to make a nice connection here. And the way that this is also connected is more of those jumper plates. And then this kind of just comes around and connects everything. And it does create a little bit of a gap here. So I'm gonna try and fill that in somehow, but I'm not entirely sure how I wanna do that. But everything else is pretty much the way that I want it. And as you'll notice, I left one of the old engines as well as the new one, just so you can kind of see the difference. Let me try and get it to focus on the back section here. It just, this looks so much cleaner and that stud kind of throws it off. This kind of ties it all in. And then once you come to the bottom, you already have all of these anti studs. And then these ones, these right now are black plates because they don't have them in teal, but these obviously exist in teal and there are no inverted tiles as I mentioned. So. This, I'm just gonna have to live with the anti-studs here. And I redid pretty much everything on this. These rounded bricks and then having it kind of taper towards the front was a huge thing for me because there are no real good slopes or wedges. So when using these kind of round bricks, you just have to build it out. But I think it was worth it because obviously you have that accuracy. So I can go ahead and put in the driver. And as you can see, there's plenty of room in there for him now to sit. So we'll just pop him in there and we can give him his controls now. And he has plenty of room. He looks really nice and homey in there. And he looks pretty good from the sides. His arm is now kind of resting on the side of the speeder, which is cool. And their heads do stick up over the windscreen in universe. So I'm not really sure what the windscreen is for. And then you have room in the back for two guys to sit side by side and we'll sit them in here so you now have room as i said for two guys which is really nice so this is what we've got for the flash speeder design and i'm actually really really happy with it there are a few things that i would like to change still but i'm going to leave this as the final design and then as the months carry on if i come up with little things that i want to change here and there i'll do that but as of right now, this is the final design for the flash speeder. 
All right, so this is what the flash speeder looks like in all of the right colors. I'm so happy with this. There's a few things on here that you just can't really get completely right in the parts that Lego has available, especially in the limited parts selection in teal. But for what I was able to do, I'm super happy with this design. Just all of the shaping and the kind of tapered off towards the front section where it's wider here and then thinner in the front and then the angle at the front that whole section the shape with those curved slopes is really nice and then thinning out the engines and the back section where it connects to the main body just all of that stuff I'm super happy with and obviously there are some things that aren't exactly the way that I'd like them to be like this archway couldn't really figure out a better way to do that and then this section here these two engines should be separate all the way down here, but there wasn't really a way to do that. Overall, I'm super excited and happy with this design, and I can't wait to order all of the pieces and have this thing in real bricks. So I got in a BrickLink order, and this one is from Kentucky on a Bricks, and I don't think I've ever ordered from them before. I don't remember um, getting a cardboard box for Lego pieces before, but we'll go ahead and open this thing up and see what we got. All right. So that appears to be everything. The main thing again that I got was dark blue because as I said in the last video, I have so little of it. So I got a bunch of four by six plates in dark blue and then I got a ton of light bluish gray one by one quarter circle tiles and then some one by two round tan plates with the holes in the center and this is really nice for doing tan texturing without having such a huge texture difference it just adds a little bit of extra detail and everything else it looks like they just threw it into one bag but I'm pretty sure it said that they would do that in their store terms so I can't really complain most of what I got were just long tan tiles for the railing and then some sand green corner slopes for the roofs and some flowers. I got some black fez pieces that I want to try out on the top of the street lamps and then some clips and rounded tan pieces and just stuff to mess around with. So happy to have this in finally and now we can get to working on those street lamps. The next thing I have to update you guys on is the fez piece for the street lamps and this is what it looks like i'm not entirely sure how i like it i think i almost like the regular tile because if you look at it it is like a long kind of cylinder and then there's like a little rounded piece on the top of it in the street lamp and this the fez piece is almost as long as the cylinder so let me know what you guys think about this in the comments and the other thing is I figured out that instead of having this whole big contraption at the bottom with studs and ugliness, I can just put it directly onto a snot brick. This is actually a snot brick with the stud on either side because if you use a regular one, there would be nowhere for this to come out. So I need to buy more of these, but you just connect it through here and the wire strings all the way through it and then put it on like this and then you can't even see where it connects. It just goes straight into the road. The wire goes down and I think this is a much better design. It doesn't draw attention where it doesn't need to be drawn and this is definitely the design that I'm going to be pursuing now. And the other thing is I want to have some snot mixed into the tile floor for different floor tiles because if you look at the floor on Theed, there's definitely a lot of different size floor tiles. So me and Daniel decided that we want to have some snot sections mixed in with some tiles and this is probably going to be the final design. You can turn this on just to get you guys a look at what it looks like, but that is going to wrap it up for this segment. So I threw together just a quick little mock-up of what the streets are gonna look like. This is obviously an over-textured, over-detailed version of that, but this is just a general idea. As I said, I wanted to have different sections of snot mixed in with tiles and plates, and then I threw in some of these panel pieces attached to grills just to add in extra height variation just to keep it more interesting so that when you kind of look at it 
from this, you can kind of see just the height differentiation, which adds in a lot to the road. Otherwise, it would be just kind of a bunch of spam. And this, as you can see, is where this connects in this snot piece. And it fits right into the rest of the road. You don't really see anything. That was kind of the goal with this. Obviously, none of this is connected right now, but that was kind of the goal with this thing here. And you got a bunch of different kind of street tiles which is the main idea for the street going on. And then I can go ahead and turn on the lights and obviously the thing still lights up. You got the wire going all the way underneath through and up into the main light. So this is the general look of what the streets are gonna look like. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode four of Building Feed. Got a lot done with the flash beater. That whole thing is now done. And as I said, I'm gonna probably work on it a little bit more as time goes on, but I have a few months until the end of this series and I don't wanna overwork myself and hyper focus on one aspect of the mock and then just kind of get burned out on the entire thing. So as of right now, I'm just gonna leave that how it is, order the parts, build it and see what happens with that. Definitely really happy with that design though. And I got some stuff done with the roads too. I'm actually really happy with the way that the snot looks when it's mixed in. Just making those elevated changes really adds some visual interest to that otherwise pretty boring section of the mock. And I think that it's going to look really nice over the entire stretch instead of it just being plates and tiles and all that boring stuff. So really excited about that. And then the lights too. I am a little bit disappointed with the Fez piece. I was hoping that would be able to help out with that design for the light, but I think it just clashes too much. If you guys are interested in the lights that I'm using, it's Light My Bricks and you can get $10 off your first purchase if you click the link at the top side of the screen. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye.